Hurricane Patricia is the strongest hurricane ever recorded in the Western Hemisphere. It's another indication of the warming Pacific. Joining us for a look at what this means for San Diego is Mark Mady, forecaster with the National Weather Service. Mark, uh, why are we seeing so many hurricanes in the Pacific this year? Well, a big factor is that the ocean water temperatures are so warm. They're so much above average, and that's providing fuel for any tropical cyclones that develop to intensify and then intensify into hurricanes. How did this one uh, get so big so quickly? It did intensify very, very rapidly. In fact, the fastest intensification on record, it deepened 100 millibars in 24 hours. That's never happened before. That's an indication of how intense this system is. And again, a big contributing factor, ocean water temperatures are about six degrees warmer than they normally are. That just provides extra fuel for the system to intensify, and that's exactly what it did. Could you describe briefly uh, how much force this hurricane is packing? This is an amazing hurricane. This is basically almost off the charts in its sheer size and strength. And it's the deepest hurricane ever in the Western Pacific as, as the Western Hemisphere, as you said. And you can, it can be equated to an EF5 tornado, which is the most powerful tornado we can measure. That is not just a mile wide that can be happening in the Southern Plains. This is gonna be about a five mile swath of 200 mile an hour plus winds gusting to 250 miles an hour that's going to make landfall in Mexico. My goodness. Now we've all heard about the potential El Nino this winter. What, uh, what does this hurricane have to do with that, if anything? There is probably some correlation there, just due to the fact that we have this intense warming of the Pacific, and so it provides extra fuel for any cyclones to intensify. So this warmer ocean water, this anomalously warm water, is probably a contributing factor to the number of hurricanes we're seeing and tropical cyclones, which is far and away more than we've seen in the Atlantic this year. When we have an El Nino, we have more hurricanes in the Pacific and fewer in the Atlantic, and we're seeing that play out this year. Why do uh, typically hurricanes hit off the coast of Mexico and then they peter out by the time they get up to the U.S.? Yeah, there's a current along the California coast called the California Current, and it comes from Alaska. It moves from north to south. It draws all that cold air from the Gulf of Alaska into here the coastal waters of California. And that's why typically our ocean water temperatures don't get much above 75 in the summer. Well, this year they've been 75, 77 degrees, 78 degrees sometimes here in the coastal waters. So it's the California current that knocks down the ocean water temperatures when it gets this far south. Therefore, the hurricanes can't survive and they weaken as they move north. Now, we've recently seen some terrible flooding up north on the I-5, uh, just a few hours north of us. What's the possibility that we could get such flooding with an El Nino this year in San Diego? Well, you go back to the historical El Ninos of 97, 98, 82, 83, and we've had, we had historic flooding for both of those El Ninos. So the magnitude of this El Nino is, is very similar to those El Ninos. So there's a real threat. There's a real threat for us to get some more of those catastrophic flooding events that could hit Southern California. It's not guaranteed, but the fact that this El Nino is so much stronger than, is a very strong El Nino means that the probabilities are higher that we're going to see above average rainfall here in Southern California. What parts of San Diego are most vulnerable to floods? Well, almost any areas really, but the impacted areas back in 82, 83, and 97, 98, the San Diego River, the Fashion Valley, the Mission Valley area saw a lot of flooding. So that's right in that river channel, the San Diego River. So those areas there are going to be the most prone to flooding if we get one of these systems that just settles over us and rains for two or three days. However, other areas, other flood prone areas, low lying areas, uh, Pacific Beach, Mission Beach, those areas that are typical prone to flooding, and any other channel, any other dry channel or any river channel can be, is gonna be very prone to flooding. I know that the crews in the, the San Diego Emergency Services and the flood control are doing their best to clear the channels of debris, and that will help alleviate, allow, allow the water to flow to the ocean. Lastly, Joe, how can homeowners uh, better prepare for this whole El Nino thing? Well, there is a, a st few steps you can take. You make sure your properties are cleared from any de debris, and if you live near a flood channel, it might be worth your while to check with your insur insurance agent, talk about flood insurance. It takes a 30 days for your, your policy to take effect, so it might be something to talk with your agent to see if it's something that you might benefit from. Okay, thanks very much. Mark Mady, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Appreciate you coming in. My pleasure, thanks for having me on.